Hello and welcome back to Dicebreaker. This is another Today We Played video, although really if we were going to title it correctly, it would be Yesterday I Played, because yesterday I went to play the Elder Scrolls A Call to Arms miniatures game. Yeah, it's kind of like a little preview, actually, yeah. because it's, it's not sort of publicly available yet. And no, it's still... not until next year. Oof, so um, quite a sort of early look at what's going on with that. Yeah, you were supposed to come with me, but you were ill. Still am, so I'm so. going to be uh, <laughs> delightful. So I will instead regale you with tales of what I done played. Um, basically, it's a miniatures game that takes place on a fairly small map, kind of the same size as a Frostgrave map, the dimensions of which I can't remember, so I'll flash them up on screen. About this big? Now. Uh, yeah, but sort of a bit bigger than that. It was, it was, yeah, it was a relatively big. Play area, um, <laughs> and I played one of the two modes you can take on in the Old Scrolls minis, uh, which was Delve mode, which is basically uh, this single player or co-op mode, uh, where we were taking on the quest to retrieve the Golden Claw from, ah. is it Barrow Cleft thing? Barrow Hill Cleft, that place where it, I really sound knowledgeable. I promise I put like hundreds of hours into Skyrim, <laughs> so I do know my onions. But anyway, basically, um, it was a miniature game where I had a female dragonborn and an imperial like uh, fire mage who was also fairly handy with a sword and we were facing off against a bunch of Draugr um, trying to basically rush to treasure tokens and turn them over hoping to find the golden claw, make it to a puzzle door and escape. Um, and you know what? It's genuinely quite good and mm. it genuinely feels very familiar in terms of like having played Skyrim there are a lot of little touches they've worked in which feel like really appropriate to the game. It's kind of in form, quite similar to Fallout Wasteland Warfare, which of course is from the same publisher. Um, so and we'll, we'll probably share a bit of DNA, obviously, because most, most people who make miniatures games in different settings will sort of pick and choose bits that they yeah. liked and carry them on kind of thing. So. It, which again is kind of fitting because you play a Fallout game and it feels very familiar to an Elder Scrolls game because they're made by the same people. Yeah, they, exactly. they, they share that same DNA. So stealth, for example, is, is quite a, a, a big part of moving around if you want to be sneaky. Because uh, on your activation, you can do a standard move or you can uh, spend a point of stamina to sort of move a few inches further. It's sort of half your movement again. Um, and or you can like try and uh, hide and then move like silently or push your luck and try and sprint, which makes you slightly easier to spot. Mm. So there's all that kind of skulking about in the shadows business. Um, but then at the heart of it is just like a, a, a pretty well ordered miniatures game. Like I think if Skyrim fans who aren't already experienced in like tabletop games and specifically miniatures games, if they mm. just jumped in because they were like, it's Skyrim but tabletop, I think the learning curve is going to be pretty steep yeah. because there is quite a lot to keep track of in terms of um, not just the tokens you have because you've got you know you've got all your stats and stuff but you've got health, magicka, uh, thum if you're the dragonborn, um, and you've got stamina. Uh, you regain points of stamina and magicka each turn, which is kind of like regaining stamina in the video game. Mm -hmm. And you can have items that boost those, and you can have potions which boost them again, which is really good and feels again very familiar to Skyrim, but um, in terms of uh, the sort of the turn order and remembering when enemies activate and when they attack you and keeping track of what behaviours they're meant to have, I think it's going to be quite challenging for people to pick up. But if they put the time in, there's actually genuinely quite a rewarding uh, miniatures game sort of there. I was impressed by how well it runs for like a single player experience because basically it's um, the game is played by like activation, which for anyone who sort of uh, doesn't know these games particularly well, means that I've got, you know, I had two models on the table. There were, there was one Draugr per treasure token, and then more were spawning mm. each, each round. So in the end, we had seven on the board in total. Um, I would activate a model and do two actions, like so move and hide, or move and attack someone something like that, um, turning over treasure tokens was a free action. So generally I was bimbling around, like sneaking in, trying to grab treasure, sneaking animation, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which, you know, it feels very Bethesda. Like a lot of the, a lot of the, the NPCs in Skyrim look like haunted mannequins, you know, like, <laughs> I heard they're reforming the Dawn Guard. Like it's, it's, it's quite impressive that these miniatures seem more lifelike. Um, I was going to say that it's like, it's weird that 
because he obviously I didn't play it, so I'm sort yeah. of I'm, I'm imagining it in my brain hole. Mm -hmm. But there's like there are a few bits of because obviously we both put quite a few hours into Skyrim, I think. Yeah. Um, there are a few bits where I'm like, yeah, everyone's a stealth archer, cool. Uh, and then exactly. That's you exactly spend most it. of your time attacking Draugr. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. <laughs> um, so that was it. You know, obviously I had the game explained to me, um, and then they're like, okay, how do you want to play this? And I was like, well, I'm going to do this exactly the same way I did every Skyrim encounter, which is I'm going to sneak in somewhere. Um, I'm going to try and like steal this treasure. Um, I'll, do a, I'll do a sneaky attack or I'll sneak up on somebody. And as soon as I've killed that one person, it's weapons free. I'm just going to charge in and start shouting at everyone. Mm. And that's exactly what happened and exactly how it played out. And that felt like a viable strategy. But to go back to the way the, sort of the game works, you activate a model, you do your move with it. And then in delve mode, where you're, you're controlling all of the enemies as well, you... Uh, Draw a chit, because all of the enemies are numbered, to determine which one activates. And then on its card, it's got a little chart, and it tells you sort of what path it takes. Uh, so whether it's a path of shadow enemy or a path of might enemy, which just determines sort of like how likely it is to charge you or seek cover mm. or straight up attack you. You roll a die and consult this little chart, and it tells you what it's going to do, whether it's going to... Um, like move aggressively, like if it's say if it's attacking you in its path of might, it will sprint towards you and then block if it can't reach you for an attack. If it's a cautious enemy and it's moving, it will try and move into co cover. And if it can't, it will just take the most direct path towards you. So all these different uh, sort of uh, behaviors that are governed by the game, uh, which make like you do get a sense of how these enemies behave. And it, it reminded me a lot of of bloody Draugr in the game, because I hate them. Um, you've got the swordsmen who are just like going to run up and clunk at you, and then you've got skeleton archers in the back who are like, Ooh, mm. just like running around and taking pot shots at you, and it's a faff to get over there and kill them. Like mm. It felt very familiar, um, but it is a lot to, to bear in mind. There are also triggering rules where like, uh, if you complete a move, say if you, you move and finish a move within six inches of a, an enemy model, it will attack you, you know, and stuff like that. So mm. I think it's, it, like I say, it's a steep learning curve, but once you've sort of got the basics down, the game sort of moves along at quite a nice clip, which is... Yeah. So one, one of the things I'm interested with this, and yeah. I think this is always like something that's quite important with branded properties, yeah. is the... Like, because it's quite a niche to be someone who is willing to learn quite a complex tabletop game with miniatures, yeah. which is also Skyrim. Yeah. So like, if, if you're not a Skyrim fan, if you're not an Elder Scrolls fan, is there enough there for you to, Ooh. to still enjoy it? Do you know what I mean? That's a good question. I definitely think the main appeal in this game is how faithfully it's recreated a bunch of things from Skyrim. Like, after my demo, I was like, you know, I enjoyed that a lot, but it also feels very familiar. And they were like, that's, that's a big relief because, you know, we know we can make a good miniatures game, but... Um, to hear that it actually does hit the source material right mm. is, is a real comfort. Um, yeah, I think, like, I definitely think there is enough in there that you would enjoy it, because it's, it's, it's a dungeon crawler, yeah. you know, and there are multi-part quests. So when I, when I went to get the Golden Claw, that was a um, part two of a three-part sort of mini-campaign. The next one would be the grand hall with the, the word wall that you'll mm. remember with the casket that yeah. blows off and you've got that big mean Draugr. So, like, it's, it's a fun dungeon crawler. Um, and I think you could definitely enjoy it if, if, you didn't, if you'd never played an Elder Scrolls game or never played Skyrim. Um, I just think you would miss a lot. Like, mm. you, you, a lot of the things I saw, I was like, oh, it's the only thing! <laughs> like, that was exciting for me. And if you didn't have that, you'd just be like, uh, okay, this is... Um, there's an amulet of Talos, uh, so it means I can regenerate one extra point of stamina per turn. Fine. Um, okay. Yeah. You know, it's it, it's it, missing all that world building is it would be a shame, I think, because um, they're also just like you've got you've got your main scenario. So I had to you know get the golden claw and get out, but you also draw quests for yourself, um, which will be like. Uh, kill three enemies and you'll get a victory point and this will happen and then you draw another quest. Um, you can take oaths which uh, influence your playstyle. So I could have got one for searching every single treasure marker on the map, uh, which would have got me three points. Instead I picked a one victory point one which was just like search a treasure token while hidden, which was kind of fun. Um, but to finally get back to your question, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like it's a solid game in and of its own right. I just think the vast majority of the appeal, the appeal obviously comes from it being a licensed property and a licensed property done well. Because it's there's there's a lot of dungeon crawlers out there. Yeah. Because like, there are things like that have been running for a long time as well, stuff like Descent, which yeah. is something that's huge, sprawling, mm. and also is specifically designed to be relatively sort of open to newcomers, but also has a lot of sort of meatiness to, to mm -hmm. jump into. And I wonder if, if you're not a massive Skyrim fan um, and you're coming at this as like someone who's just sort of interested in the, the concept of it, it, it sort of, it makes me wonder what the, the main sort of appeal is. Yeah. The, the other question I had is like, what's, so you were playing Delve Mode, which is basically yes. a dungeon crawl. Yeah. So what, what was your end goal? Were you trying to hit like a cap? For victory points? Or? Oh, uh, so the victory points were uh, just useful in terms of knowing how well I'd done, but mm -hmm. also if you get five victory points, you level up your character. Right. So at that point, the card flips and the stats improve. Uh, so the Dragonborn got stronger and got a couple of extra traits. And one trait they had, uh, which added a bonus die when attacking undead, got a different bonus die on top. Because um, we haven't even talked about the dice yet, like you sort of assemble different pools of ones that have you know different um, different ranges of, of uh, like hits and values and stuff, um, and there are, I, I found every single crit fail on that d20, which is the skill die, <laughs> I swear. But um, victory points are they're just a useful metric in terms of like leveling up your characters and, and knowing how you've done. But really, the goal was just to complete the scenario without dying and try and advance. Um, so you had conditions you were trying to meet. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, and obviously I was trying not to get both of the characters killed because yeah. that would have been really embarrassing. <laughs> I did very nearly get my mage killed uh, just because they they had a couple of rounds where they were like, fireball, fireball into the sky or the <laughs> nearest wall or whatever. <laughs> the Dragonborn sort of took a bit of a pasting as well. But luckily, just like in the game, when you level up, you clear all of your mm. stamina tokens and, and, and so health that, and stuff. So you were saying you flip a card. Is that just a straight... You've leveled up now. There's no yeah. like ranked system. There's just... no. It's it's like it's kind of like um, in uh, Warhammer Underworlds. You have got your normal. You have got your inspired. inspired. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so there are two versions. So basically. is there like a campaign? Yes. Is that the idea? Because it, it one of the sort of thing that sort of strikes me as odd about that is the fact that you enter every level of the dungeon not leveled up and then at some point level up? Or you, do you just stay leveled up for the rest of the campaign? You know, I, one level? We didn't actually discuss that. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. If it is the fact that you level up and then you stay leveled, um, I mean, A, that would be a bit weird because it would only give you one thing to sort of reach for each yeah. time. But I think there is a lot in terms of the gear um, and the treasure you find sort of leveling up your stats and the stuff mm. you have on you. Like I found, um, I, I had two swords to start with as the Dragonborn, and then I found Wuthrad, the massive two-handed axe, mm. and was like, get me in there, yes please. <laughs> but I think, to be honest, while you do have a champion, you have sort of your team, I think if just based on uh, the models you get in the core set, I think you are supposed to jump around a bit more. Um, and it's almost like you're doing, maybe it's that you're doing you know, short campaigns like this three-part Golden Claw quest, that's just sort of a scenario, and right. then you go do something else, and maybe reset. Um, I'm not entirely sure, uh, and I should have asked after that. But to to sort of tee you up to how many models there are in in the base set, you get uh, like you know obviously the Dragonborn. You get some Draugr and like skeletons, um, and then they, there's a pretty decent sized stock of Imperials and Stormcloaks. So mm. there are, and they are they're planning to issue sort of updates which take on like missions to do with the Civil War quest line and all that kind of stuff. But it feels like there's a lot of there's a lot to be gained from jumping around between heroes and champions and, and trying to do different things like against different forces. Like so one time you might be fighting Draugr and the next time you might be playing a Stormcloaks fighting the Imperials and they have very a very different flavour. Like the Imperials are all about, you know, being a bit more tanky and defensive. Mm. Whereas the Stormcloaks, they're like glass cannons. You yeah. know, they, they're all about attacking, but once they get in there, they're not that durable. Right. Um, so I think there's there's a good amount of variety. I just don't know how long the campaigns are, basically. Okay. But the models, I should say, are really, really nice. Yeah. We, I mean, obviously, we were looking at like professionally painted resin sculpts. Whereas I think in the base set, you'll get PVC ones, 
which, uh, you know, is like there's still a decent amount of detail on there. Obviously, a little bit's lost because you're not working in resin. But the poses are really cool. The level of detail is great. Like, the, the sculpt of... They've really delved deep to try and get the, the game assets across. Mm. And like it just it looks very nice. Cool. Basically. Okay. And then so one final question. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about delve mode. Yeah. Is there still like a pitched battle style? Yes. I've got my forces, you've got your forces. Yeah. Right. Um, and it's to do with septims, which mm -hmm. are obviously the imperial currency. Um, so the different characters have different costs. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you you can absolutely there is a, a fully fledged like PvP mode, where there are still monsters dotted around and stuff, so you and I oh, could be okay. fighting, you know, I could be clashing my Stormcloaks against your Imperials, but we're both having to fend off Draugr and stuff mm. like that um, to keep sort of scenarios a bit different and interesting. So yeah, it, it's all there, there are point values assigned to the uh, people in the warband, so if you wanted to go big, then you really could. Um, yeah, it's like, it's... I, again, I, I didn't get a look at that mode, but I know it exists. Cool. Mm. I, I, I quite like the idea of there being sort of like neutral mobs in the middle of the battlefield. I love it. I like because I don't know about you, but I, I kind of, if I'm playing something like Frostgrave, I, I played once where there was this a monster got summoned and it was massive and scary, but it always every turn just attacked the nearest uh, wizard or n nearest character. So I was using my wizards to just push it. Yeah. It just be like, yeet the monster yeah, yeah, over exactly. there. And now it's exactly. going to attack you. And it's just like, it, the minute you get mobs in there, it feels more like a game of possession football yeah. than it does <laughs> like a pitched battle. Uh, yeah, I just remembered I left my Frostgrave warband on a train. But the models in <laughs> the Elder Scrolls of Call to Arms are pretty cool. <laughs> Her. It's fine. I do like the idea of because um, there is that sort of thing in in all the Festa games where like you're just having your standard fight where it's like you versus a barbarian and then a bear just appears <laughs> and just just murders someone. But yeah, so I quite like the idea of that just happening on the battlefield. Yeah, but yeah it sounds pretty cool. Sounds yeah. pretty interesting. Um, so that'll be available to early to next year. Early I next think year. is their okay. planned release window. So maybe we'll even have a look at the the finished product. Give it yeah. a, give it a playthrough. Uh, but yeah, thanks very much for watching this Today We Played, or Today Johnny Played in this case. Yesterday Johnny uh, Played. Yesterday Johnny Played. Such a catchy title. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you enjoyed this, then we have plenty more videos that you can have a look at. In fact, some of them will be appearing at the bottom of the screen, as well as a little subscribe button, which you can click on to subscribe to our channel. And if you click on the Ooh. bell icon underneath the video, you'll also get notified whenever we put a video live. Ring my bell. Um, so yeah, thanks again for watching, uh, and have a lovely day.